So hello everyone. Uh, my name is Tejas Mehta and I'm a program manager on uh, the SharePoint Experiences team. I primarily focus on uh, Viva Connections. Um, I'm also responsible for features in our uh, SharePoint portals and publishing system. Uh, this particular session, I'm going to be talking to you about getting started with Viva Connections in your respective tenants. I'm going to turn off my camera because I'm hearing a little bit of a jitter or a lag, but I'll turn it back on when we get to Q&A. So let's, uh, let's dig in. Okay, first, uh, just a quick introduction to Microsoft Viva, if you're, if you're unfamiliar. Uh, uh, Microsoft Viva is a new solution that helps organizations and people thrive. Um, Viva is all about putting employees at the center, and it gives everyone what they need to be at their best and help them focus on what matters most. Microsoft Viva is an integrated, insights-driven employee experience platform that brings together communications, knowledge, learning, uh, and workplace insights. Powered by Microsoft 365 and Microsoft Teams, Viva helps your organization build human connection, foster growth uh, and well-being, and drive peak, perf uh, peak business performance. So you'll see uh, Viva portfolio. There are currently four modules. The focus for this se uh, session is connections. Connections is a new employee app in Teams uh, and is the gateway to your employee experience. It provides employees with personalized news, communications, tasks, people, and resources, and it provides a single curated uh, employee destination that can be configured for specific roles like frontline workers and branded to match your company. So leaders can communicate and engage their employees, and employees can get easy access to the tools and resources they need from a single place. Connections builds on existing capabilities in Microsoft 365 like SharePoint and Yammer, and it pulls your communications together into a pre-configured app in Teams designed both for desktop and mobile workers. So Connections provides three interactive experiences for employees in the mobile experience. Uh, first is a personalized dashboard that makes it easy uh, to get to company and role specific tasks, actions, and can also be tailored for different audiences. It includes a personalized feed that rolls up company news, information, and discussions so that you can stay on top of the latest and greatest in your organization. And it includes a resources experience that provides easy navigation and wayfinding to important employee resources that my organization programmed for me. Uh, and best of all, it's built on top of Microsoft Teams, as I mentioned before, and it pulls in signals and content from your current Microsoft 365 investments like SharePoint, Teams, Yammer, Stream, and more into a single consolidated and customizable single pane for every employee. Okay, in terms of availability, uh, Connections is currently available in public preview, and it provides both a desktop experience that you might already be familiar with. Uh, it's the one that we released earlier this year back in March, uh, but that uh, capability also includes now a dashboard and feed web parts that you can add to the desktop experience. But more importantly, um, we have also now included the mobile app experience in Teams, and that includes those three pivots that I just talked about with the dashboard feed and resources, and it delivers a rich, fast experience for users. So I think that's mostly it for my preamble before I switch gears and spend time talking about how you can get started uh, from a setup and config perspective. So there are a few things you need to make sure you've completed in order to deliver the best Viva Connections experiences for your users. Many of these you might have already done in your environments, but for completeness, I just wanted to run through the checklist here. You'll need one, an intranet uh, built on SharePoint Online. Two, you'll need a home site. This is the experience that surfaces in the team's desktop and web apps. Third, you'll need global navigation. So this is the set of curated links uh, that will be available across things like the SharePoint app bar, the Teams navigation panel uh, in the Viva Connections app inside of Teams, which I'll show you in, in just a moment it, for the desktop and web experiences, as well as the resources experience um, of the pivot in the Teams mobile app. Fourth, you'll need a dashboard, and this uh, is going to provide that native experience for the dashboard cards uh, uh, in Teams for iOS and Android. And lastly, you'll need to set up the app uh, in Teams Admin Center, providing things like the naming and branding for the app uh, and taking some uh, policy actions like uh, pre-installing or pre-pinning it for users in your tenant. 
So across all of these areas, there you'll require multiple personas that work really work together, uh, from SharePoint admins to home site editors uh, to Teams admins. Uh, and in this session, I'll actually walk through everything except the first step. My presumption is that you're already starting with an intranet built on SharePoint. I think I'm going to transition over to demo. Just give me a second. All right. So here I am in my uh, demo tenant Relic Cloud. I'm on the uh, root site in my tenant, and it happens to be a com uh, modern communication site. The first step that I'd mentioned before that we're going to take is we want to set a home site for this tenant. So uh, we've introduced a new UI in SharePoint Admin Center to make it easy to set a, uh, a home site for your tenant. So here I am in the SharePoint Admin Center. I'm going to click on Settings, and you'll see that there's a home site option here. Let me click on that. Panel slides out. I've actually set uh, actually set the home site just a few minutes uh, prior to the session because it does take uh, a few minutes for the settings to actually flow through to the underlying home site. So uh, I did that previously, but you can see that you can set that here. It's new uh, UX. Previously, you needed to use PowerShell to do that. So step one, complete home site set. I'm going to switch back over to the home site um, uh, in the tenant. And this now we're going to set up uh, global navigation. So global navigation, as I'd mentioned before, is the set of curated links that will surface across SharePoint app bar, uh, the nav panel in Teams, and the resources pivot in the Viva Connections app on Teams mobile. And if you click on the gear menu here, you will see global navigation. And that brings me to a panel where I can enable global navigation. So I'll click on that toggle. And let me see if I can quickly upload a, an icon. The title Relic Cloud is good. Navigation source, I'm just going to leave it as Hubber Global Navigation. And I'm going to click on Edit Global Nav, which brings me with it to a, a nav editing experience. So I'm just going to add the link to the landing itself as the top node here and call it landing. So as easy as that, I can start building out that curated set of links that I want to make available to all of my employees in my organization. You'll notice a toggle at the bottom. I can enable audience targeting, and that, that really allows me um, uh, to, to make a tailored uh, navigation experience for different groups of users within my organization. So I'm not going to build out all of uh, the global navigation in this uh, session, but I do have another tenant where I've done all of that already. So I'll just click over to that one. It's basically the same looking site and uh, global navigation has been programmed here and you'll see that there's multiple levels of nodes. Um, uh, entire links or nodes can be uh, audience targeted as well. All right, so that's the second step. Let me come back to this uh, tenant here. All right, so we've set the home site and we've set up global navigation. The next step is to create a dashboard. So I'm going to go back to the gear menu here. And you'll see a node here that says set up Viva Connections. So I'll click on that. You get a panel that tells you a little bit about what Viva Connections is, and you have an option to create a dashboard. So I'm going to go ahead and click on Create Dashboard. See that I'm brought to a, a, an edit experience for a new dashboard content type that I've created uh, in the home site. I'm going to click through this first run experience, which orients the user. They've never seen it before. And I'll walk through some of the capabilities here. So the first thing I can do is, is start adding cards. So I'll pause here and see in the toolbox, you'll see that there's a set of uh, uh, card types that are available from the dashboard toolbox. The, there's a tasks card, a Teams app card that will allow me to pick any Teams uh, app or bot um, available in my uh, store, and web link. I'm going to click on web link here and edit that. See that I can uh, configure these web card, uh, these cards if, if, with different uh, properties. So I can choose from different sizes of the card. I'm going to choose a website, xbox.com. It will pull some of the information directly from the web service. 
Uh, I have options to change the thumbnail or the icon that you see, uh, or even the card description. So I can really configure the, the web link card uh, to, to suit my needs. Uh, one thing to note is similar to the audience targeting capability that we have in the global navigation, every card on the dashboard is, is available for it to be audience targeted as well. So as you build out your um, uh, dashboard experience, you can actually tailor it to different uh, audiences or different groups of people uh, within your organization. So, um, you know, it, it's actually a fairly straightforward process to add multiple cards to uh, the dashboard. I'm going to click Teams app here and just to give you an idea, um, this will pull, pull from all of the Teams apps that are available in my tenant. I can go and pick any, any one of these. Okay, so again, similar to, I'm just going to go and publish this for now. Great. Uh, and I'm going to switch over to that other tenant where I've already baked all of these things and just show you uh, kind of examples of some of the, the um, uh, cards that are available here. Many of the cards here have been mocked up by our card designer, but you'll see that you've got various sizes uh, on the dashboard. Um, we've got cards uh, which have uh, multiple levels of experience. So you can either tap on the card that will take you to a web link, or you can deep link them directly to Teams apps. Um, or uh, shell out to a browser a kind of uh, experience. So an example here is the holidays card. And I'll tap on see all and you'll see uh, uh, using the uh, SPFX uh, card extension framework, I'm able to build these level two quick view experiences from which I can interact, take actions, um, uh, or I'd potentially even click out to uh, kind of a deep linked application. So I think that's it for creating the dashboard. Oh, there was one, one other thing that I wanted to show you. So let me go back to, actually I'll stay in this one. So if I go to edit mode for the dashboard, we provide a preview capability. Uh, so if I was to click on preview, I can see what the dashboard will look like uh, by different form factors. So this is what it looks like in mobile and I can actually scroll through it here. Uh, I can see what it would look like if rendered um, uh, in desktop mode. But you'll notice that there's a banner that shows up up top that some cards are not being shown because they're audience targeted. To see them, add more audiences to preview. So we also have introduced the ability to preview the dashboard uh, as, as if you were a, a member of different audiences. So in this case, you can, as I click or unclick different audiences, the dashboard reflows and gives you an idea of what the dashboard would look like if you were a member of, in this case, uh, a communications group and the Contoso marketing group. Okay, so I'm gonna close out a preview here, discard these changes. Okay, uh, all right, so that's, uh, we've set the home site, we've set up global navigation, we've created the dashboard, uh, now I think we get to move over to how do we get this set up uh, in my tenant so that my users can start using the app inside of Teams. So I'm going to come back to my new tenant and I will go over to Teams Admin Center. All right, so this is relatively straightforward. So I go to uh, Manage Apps and if you've never touched the Aviva Connections app in Teams Admin Center yet, you can search for it. And you'll see that it shows up here as uh, Viva Connections. I will click on that. And I have a few options here. You'll see that it's sort of default branded with the Microsoft Viva logo. Um, and it has metadata uh, that corresponds with the Viva Connections app. Uh, you'll see that the app is in the allowed state, but in um, uh, any of your tenants, the, the app is rolling out in a default off or blocked state. And that's done intentionally because uh, there are some of the prerequisite steps that, that I showed you just now. You need to make sure that you have a home site, uh, global navigation, and a dashboard. So we didn't want to um, have the app in a default allowed state, uh, which would you know, uh, enable users to discover and install the app and have not a great experience. So the idea is it will ship in a block state. You go and do some all of the pre-configuration steps, and when, when the admin is ready, they can go and uh, uh, enable the app for users in the tenant. So I'm going to click on the customized pencil here and update some of the properties. So this is going to be my Relic Cloud app in my tenant. Um, I will leave all of these other things for now. Um, I will upload an icon. For that, it will be my corporate Rela Cloud logo. There's a 
uh, outline icon required as well. I'll upload that here too. And I'm going to add an accent color because on mobile, I want all of the, the theming to match with, with the color scheme for my home site. And that is the, the teal-ish uh, color that matches with my, my landing site. So I'm going to click on apply now and publish the application. One thing to note is when you're making changes in Teams Admin Center, it could take up to 24 hours for these changes to flow through. So you'll even see here that the logo isn't didn't catch right away. I'm going to quickly refresh to see if that does take. It did. All right, so great. So at this point, the app is allowed in my tenant and users are able to, um, uh, to access the app. Uh, another thing that we we advise you do is is look at your setup policies and um, for uh, Viva Connections, uh, it's an opportunity to bring that app uh, into the uh, app bar uh, as a pinned app by default. So there are a few few options here. You can pre-install this particular app uh, for your users. I'm going to search for Rela Cloud now because that's the the new name of the Viva Connections app in my tenant. So I'll add that to the list of apps that are installed in my user, user's personal environments. And then I'm also going to go ahead and add this app uh, end for all of my users. And I'd like to pin that all the way at the top. So I will click on Save. So as I'd mentioned before, I think any changes that you make here can take a little bit of time to trickle out to all of the clients in my tenant. Uh, you can also uh, use app permissions policies to specify uh, which users in your organization have uh, access to the app as well. And that's a useful uh, uh, set of policies that you can define as you build out Viva Connections in your environments or sort of slowly expand the rings of people that have access to the app inside the tenant. Okay, so I think that that is uh, the setup steps from Teams uh, Admin Center. I'm going to click back to the Teams experience in the same tenant. So let's see if, I mean, I said 24 hours is a good chance that you won't see the app here yet. Yeah, it was wishful thinking. So I'm going to flip over to my other tenant that I already have in place. And this is the app now that, that shows up in the desktop experience. So you'll see that it's pinned here uh, uh, as an app in the, in the Teams app bar. I can click on the Rela Cloud logo and have access to those global navigation resources that I programmed earlier. Uh, the nav, this is the nav panel. So the global navigation kind of represents the top third of what you see here. Uh, the next third is uh, my site. So these are sites that I've, I've been following. So I have an intention to follow, to keep these sites around from a wayfinding perspective. And then there's a third bucket of uh, sites that show up that are uh, that are news that's tailored for for me as an employee. So that's the the nav panel experience that you get by clicking on the nav uh, by the icon in the nav. And you'll see a couple of things that I've done here uh, that uh, that weren't in the other tenant. I've added the dashboard web part, which is now available on the home site itself. So you're seeing the very same dashboard show up right here on the home page itself. And there's a feed web part that I've also added to the home page. So it's an opportunity to take uh, uh, elements of what shows up on the in the mobile experience for Viva Connections and actually uh, uh, building that connection back, pun intended, to the desktop experience. So I'm going to switch and show you how this looks on uh, the mobile in the mobile experience. So let me just give me just a moment to switch. So quickly, just to kind of show you how this manifests in mobile now that, that I've done all the configuration, you've got the dashboard tab uh, and the same set of cards that I've curated or that I've created and I have them here. And click, tap on see all for the holidays card. So I have that sort of L2 quick view experience. Uh, you'll see that the branded Relic Cloud app is showing up in the tray down below, pinned all the way to the left. And I'll tap on the feed. You'll see the very same feed show up here. I'll scroll a little bit slowly, but you'll see that, um, there's some boosted news. That's a new, new feature that allows you to show news prominently to users. Um, there, are, there are going to be Yammer conversations that show up here. You can see one from Patty Fernandez. I can interact with uh, items in the feed by liking uh, or commenting on, on these entities. 
And then the last one that I'll show is I'll tap on resources. So this is that very same set of curated links, you know, really building confidence with my employees that I can get to all of the corporate resources or organizational resources that are important. Um, tap on that, I'm meant to expand it so you can see all of the same nodes show up here as well. Okay, so I think that's it for demo. I'm going to come back to my slides real quick. So I'll just build this slide out really quickly. Uh, we talked about dashboard cards, and there are some opportunities here. The example that I showed uh, was a card that had a quick view experience, so that the, exper the secondary experience that you get when you tap on uh, an action uh, on the card itself. So the example you see on the screen here is a health check card uh, uh, that comes, and then the, from that uh, second level quick view experience, you have the option to either send a user to a, a web experience in mobile browser, or deep link to a Teams app. Now that quick view is an optional uh, capability if you're building out your own dashboard cards, um, uh, but it is something, it's a great way to bring that fast, uh, lightweight, interactive capability to the dashboard, really making the dashboard experience useful for your users. Okay, and as noted earlier, I did mention that you can leverage the SharePoint framework uh, and our card extensibility model to build out those custom cards for your specific scenarios. I'd mentioned that there are a number of out of box uh, cards like the tasks card, uh, the web link card, we'll have card designer, um, and then we have a whole slew of third party ISVs that are building integrations that uh, some have been announced and some are forthcoming as well. And then obviously with the framework, you have the opportunity to build out rich card based experiences for your dashboard as well. Did I come in okay on time? I'm gonna turn my camera back on. If we've got a few minutes for Q and A, happy to do that. We're absolutely on time to host. It was awesome. Thank you so much for uh, for that round tree. It was it was great to see all that Viva connection right there. Awesome. And uh, I saw a number of messages fly through while I was presenting. You probably saw that on my mobile phone. If I don't get a chance to answer them all here, I will uh, after the meeting spend some time going through and uh, addressing those. Were there any uh, questions that you said or Vesa would like to curate? There's one, the last one, which is interesting. Um, someone seems to not have Viva uh, connections preview on their tenant. How 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 do you get it? Like, is it supposed to be light flighted or it's it, it's rolling out? That's a great question. If you are a production tenant, you should have Viva connections the the preview app in your tenant. Uh, it has rolled all the way out to Ring Four. Uh, so there's two two parts of the rollout. There's the Teams first party app itself. Uh, and that has rolled out all the way to, to Ring 4, so you should see it there. And then there's the SharePoint publishing side of the, the code. So that's the dashboard authoring experience, uh, the preview capability. Both of those things needed to be coordinated to, to be rolled out, but we we did it in a, in a fashion where the SharePoint bits went first. Uh, and then the, the Teams, um, the Viva Connections app in Teams came next. So if you happen to not be in a tenant for Ring 4, there are some cases where if your tenant happens to be in, in a tap or a preview in a, in a pre-Ring 4 configuration, it's possible that the app doesn't show up. But for the most part, all production tenants should see the app now. Ah, not in GCC yet. So if you're a GCC tenant, uh, that will come later. Awesome. And, and one question that came up a couple of times in the chat, why do we need a home site to be able to use Viva Connections? Uh, why do we need to specify a home site for, for this site to show up over there? Yeah, that's a, that's a great question. I think the sort of the bet that we're making with Viva Connections is being a top experience. This is a marquee first party uh, employee engagement experience uh, from Microsoft. And uh, the uh, being built on uh, SharePoint uh, from an infrastructure and IA perspective, we really do want customers to use the tops of their intranet as the experience that's hosted inside the Teams frame. Um, and that is the, it, the home site is the place where global navigation that you see across those experiences is hosted. It is the place where the dashboard is created. So it, it makes sense to kind of co-locate uh, the same site that you're going to be hosting inside the Teams frame with some of those other things. Um, so that's kind of the main reason. 
uh, there's probably some additional questions around, well, what if I have other sites or if I want multiple instances or multiple home sites? All of those things are on the table for us right now. Uh, we are looking at providing sort of the, the, the capability of having multiple instances of Viva connections in your tenant. The implication there being that, hey, I probably need to have multiple support for multiple home sites in my tenant. Um, I can say working on it. So that's certainly something that we want to make uh, make available for uh, for you all.